The TrekWorks YouTube channel is sponsored by Tenet Controls. And by HDA Model Works, suppliers of scale model lighting products, detail parts, and complete model kits. Visit HDAModelWorks.com today. Hello there again everybody, Boyd back with you and welcome to part 2 of our 1350 scale Polar Lights Klingon Katinga Cruiser. We've been working on this model for a couple of days now and uh, getting off to a pretty good start so we wanted to get you guys all caught up with what we're uh, working on and where we're at so far. Um, I start off on the model doing a lot of the preliminary paint work on the forward section of the ship and uh, kind of making up my mind what colors I was going to use and uh, the method that I was going to use to paint it. There's a lot of raised detail on this uh, model on the surfaces, a lot of intricate patterns. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the, the ship is supposed to look like a giant bird, so it's kind of got these feathers on it uh, all over the whole thing. And the nice thing about that is, is that the, the panels are all clearly defined in the mold, so you have nice guidelines to work with for your painted areas, and there's a lot of reference for uh, doing the actual painting. Now, I've gone back and looked at... Uh, some pictures online of the uh, original filming miniature and there are some differences between that and the recommended uh, paint job that you see that comes with this the instructions for this kit and the pictures you see on the box so uh, I don't think you could ever see two of these ships painted the same way there's so much intricacy on this thing that I think every modeler that builds it is going to uh, come up with their own kind of you know version or the way they see it and that's just perfectly fine I think that's what modeling is all about so I'm just going by what, how I interpret uh, some of the colors that I see on the original uh, studio miniature. There's a couple of uh, really clear pictures of it, both one from directly above and directly below, so you can get most of the uh, essence of what's there. Kind of uh, amazing that when you see the film that uh, the ship looks really subdued and there's not much uh, detail there at all as far as, uh, you know, these, these patterns that are on this model, but... Uh, it's you know like I said it's done with you know filters and certain kind of lighting and all that so it can really throw it off but uh, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, talk about how I've uh, what I've done so far and we'll get you up a little closer to the actual paint job here in just a second but I wanted to talk to you about what I used uh, I start off spraying the entire model with a uh, coat of black primer even though this model is uh, molded in uh, black I always still like to prime everything. Now I went over the entire thing uh, since it's got all these uh, fine details and nooks and crannies on it everywhere. I went over it with steel wool to sand it to do my prep work. Um, the main reason for that is that um, you could have some mold release agent. I also wash these parts which is really important. If you're going to do a lot of painting and you're going to be using masks and things like that you want to make sure that you always uh, prepare the uh, surface as best as you can so that the paint will adhere to it. You hate to have a spot where you're working on something and you pull a mask or pull some tape and it pulls the paint up with it. So since this plastic, these plastic parts here have all these tiny little you know edges and everything on them, steel wool works really good for that because you can you know it'll conform to all those nooks and crannies and kind of get in there and scuff them up a little bit. You don't have to be super aggressive with it. You just kind of you just rub it all over it and you can see the areas getting dull as you work on it. 
especially on the black it was really easy to see when I was getting it uh, scuffed up enough but I can't overemphasize enough that that's a really important step on a model that's complex now if you're just gonna be painting one, something all one basic color and not you know masking on it and doing things like that it probably won't be as important but uh, so that's what we did to prep this and then I went ahead and sprayed it with some flat black primer and then we just started test fitting all the parts to make sure they were going to fit and I'll say that this kit is uh, really well engineered as far as that goes all the parts are fitting really nice uh, they've designed it with lighting in mind so every little piece that goes together has like an internal edge on it so it blocks the light from leaking out around most of the seams there are a few tiny little spots here and there that you'll see showing up when you start working in the lighting but all really minor and they're easy to get to to repair just by putting in some putty or some you know glue and then painting over it so nothing really bad to report there um, uh, there are some aftermarket parts for this available as I mentioned in the first video there is a two separate photo etch uh, sheets from paragraphics there's one that has all the details for the forward part of the ship here I believe part of that's included in the uh, polar lights lighting kit as well uh, there's a panel for the forward area here, another one that kind of wraps around the bulb there. You're supposed to go in and cut out all these uh, small window openings here on the lower edge and uh, make them just kind of a big oval shape. And then this uh, photo etch part overlays on the top of that and it has all the windows done into it. But I didn't really find that that was necessary. I think the windows uh, uh, on the kit supplied parts are just fine and that's what I went with. Same thing up here. Uh, the, the nice thing about that too is if you if you stick with the kit supplied parts the uh, the detail still stays the same here and it looks more accurate where you have this raised you know trench area here and then down at the bottom you have you won't have this extra you know band that's wrapped around that you'll be able to see the edges on that um, and that's kind of another reason I decided to go this way but we'll show you the lighting here in a little bit um, and uh, you can see that the lighting that you know is molded into the kit is uh, is perfectly fine but uh, so you get on the top here up on the bridge you get a choice of both the uh, resin uh, extra detail part or the kit supplied part now what I found uh, with that and and some of the other people that have built this model will have to comment on what they found but I wound up using the kit supplied part the regular plastic part for the bridge dome um, and I thought they looked pretty much about the same as far as the detail was on but what I did notice was that the plastic part actually fits a whole lot better um, when I went to test fit the uh, the resin part there's this tiny little uh, clear lens that you have it's sort of a pie wedge shape uh, you know just a narrow slit like a circle with a socket on the bottom of it for a five millimeter LED to fit in and that's the lens for the uh, the red lighted area that you see where the little bridge windows are and these two pieces sandwiched together well the top the the clear plastic piece fit good into the lower section really close and then when I tried to put the resin part on the top I saw a big gap now I could have spent a whole bunch of time sanding on it and fiddling with it probably to get it to fit a lot better but as soon as I tried the plastic part here it just fit right on there and and like snug as a bug and so that's what I decided to go with especially since I didn't really see a whole lot of difference in the detail on the other one so that's what we did there uh, as I said, I used all the kit supplied parts. Um, I'm going to move the camera here in just a second, and I'm going to take some of this apart for you so you can see the internal uh, components that I use to do the lighting. I just used some basic uh, LED strip here at the front to light this section of windows here. A couple more in the bottom laid across, you know, lengthwise on each side of the uh, torpedo launcher down here to light this, you know, this lower row of windows that wraps around and a little bit of the lighting that's on the sides over here. Up here at the bridge, we just use a single 5 millimeter red LED. As I said, there's a socket in the bottom of that part, and that LED is made to fit in there perfectly, so you just glue that in place. Uh, I didn't pre-paint the, uh, the lens red either. I just used a regular uh, red LED uh, so that when you see it turned off, you don't see, you know, if you look at it really close, you won't see any red windows. It, it looks just black. And then when you turn it on, of course, you do see the red. So that worked out pretty good. At the uh, torpedo launcher, I haven't put in any of the lighting components into that yet because um, I'm uh, going to use the, the LEDs that are supplied with the tenant controls lighting kit, and that's one of the last things that I'll be working on. I have to paint the uh, clear parts for the torpedo launcher itself, and then there's some photo etch detail parts that go on that. So we'll be working on that. Probably show you that in the next video. But uh, I'll give you a little bit closer look at the paint job here, and you can see all the uh, feather details at the top here and 
it's pretty much a primary color to start with, all one color green. And then, uh, as I said, I went in and I looked at uh, the uh, pictures of the studio model, and you could see that they had these two-tone shades here of tan and brown and, and some gray, uh, and then this green and everything mixed in. And then the whole thing was gone over with like a wash. You know, you could see that they had done that. So I used some of this um, uh, Tamiya uh, Paneline accent color for this. This is a basically a wash is what it is. It's a kind of a mineral spirits based um, uh, solvent based uh, dye that goes on there and it has a really nice thin applicator brush and I, the color I chose was this dark brown. It seems to tie in really good with uh, the other colors that are on here. I tried a little bit of the area in black and thought it looked too bold and so I think the brown looks a little bit more subtle if I can get this uh, close for you here. And then I'm going to flip it over and you can see on the bottom I've been doing some of this. Now the colors that I'm seeing on the studio model are a little bit different than what we're seeing on this box art here. On the box art, especially on the top of the model where you see the, a lot of that feather detail, they're calling for a bunch of uh, kind of brown and, and uh, tan colors on the wings mixed in with that green. Well what I see when I look at those pictures, you'll have to look at it for yourself if you look at them online, but I see more of this color right here mixed in with it. It's sort of a... I started looking at this color and thinking, where have I seen that before? And I realized what it was. It's the shade of green that the original uh, Klingon cruiser was, the D7 cruiser in the two-tone green. It was sort of that, uh, not mint green, but a, you know, kind of a yellowish green, lighter color, and then a darker gray up on the top, if you remember what those look like. And I thought it would be kind of logical that they might use the original um, Klingon, you know, those are part of those original colors in that. And if you look at the uh, studio model on the top of the wings you see some of that uh, that Klingon color mixed in with the other darker greens and then there's some tans and there's some other colors uh, up here they're calling for like a NATO black but when I look at the studio model I see more of a you know sort of a weathered medium to dark gray on this little strip right here same thing on the bottom which is this is just some of my black primer left over I'm gonna I'm making up my mind which color to paint this area here so far because it matches this area up on the top and then we've got all these little colors right here, that these little panels that are basically the same color as this forward area up here. And um, so I'm just kind of working my way along like that and trying to interpret what I see. Um, now I've done all the painting on this with uh, all the panel painting here. It's all been done by hand with, with a basic paintbrush. I use these uh, craft acrylic paints. They work really good for, for hand brushing because you can uh, put it on there and if you make a little mistake it's a water based paint so I keep uh, a wet q-tip there right next to me and if I make a little mistake and go over on one of my lines or something um, I can take my q-tip and just wipe that right off and start over again until you get it you know just the way you want it and so it's not a solvent based paint and it won't stain or you know mess with the other paint now in between like when I started out on this I painted the the basic hull color and then I seal coated it with this uh, Duplicolor matte finish here, and um, that way you're not gonna you know burn into any of the the whole color or anything, and it won't start mixing with the color as, as you're brushing or whatever. That's an important step to remember too. You want to seal between each color. That way uh, they won't start mixing together. It doesn't hurt it so bad if you're spraying because you're putting it on you know so lightly and you're not really disturbing the other paint. But if you're brushing, it can grab you know it can reactivate the old paint even if it's been drying for a day or two especially in these acrylics something that I found out these craft paints but the nice thing about them is that when they dry they dry nice and flat they don't leave a lot of brush strokes and all that and they're super cheap you know they're very inexpensive you can go buy these at Walmart or Hobby Lobby you know they're like a dollar fifty a bottle and uh, you you know you you break them down I use a little bit of uh, uh, just plain straight water and cut these a little bit you know thin them out a little bit put it in a little paper cup and start painting. Uh, now I was able to uh, use these colors and like I said since they're so expensive I can afford to do a little bit of experimenting by mixing colors together and uh, I made my own colors for this you know I couldn't find any uh, specific colors that um, were exactly what I thought it looked like in the pictures or close to it so I just kept fiddling around you know like to get this brown right here this darker brown this brown is called uh, dark brown of all things it's uh, too dark for what I wanted and I didn't have anything in between so I just took a little bit of this and a little bit of this and put them together and mixed them in a little cup until I had it lightened up a little bit and that's what I went with same thing on this it's a little bit too light 
So just a t couple drops of the darker color into that made the, uh, you know, this, this more tan color here that you see. And I did that with all my paints. I've got, uh, I, I've got these marked here, like uh, this one says Katinga Dark Green. That's the, uh, that's the uh, uh, highlight color that I used right up in here along the, uh, the forward part here and then the lower striping area on that part. There's not a whole lot more of that color used overall on the whole model, which is kind of weird, but that's how they went with it. So I didn't have to make very much of that paint. Um, and this is the... Uh, one that I made the most amount of. I made a whole little bottle of this stuff, and this is the uh, uh, hull color here, this sort of, you know, greenish olive drab sort of color. And uh, I knew I was going to need the most of that because the entire model is going to get sprayed with that, you know. And, and as I said, I sprayed sprayed on the base coat because it would look, you know, it would be crazy painting the whole thing by hand, but I sprayed on the base coat of the entire model, the large surfaces, or I'm going to be doing that on the rest of it. And then, you know, sealing that with the with the clear, and then coming back and hand painting on these things. Some of the bigger panels on the uh, on the you know top of the rear part of the model and the lower part of the wing area, I'll be airbrushing those because those are big panels and they're really long and stuff. And and you may not want to brush paint those. You you know I may test a few of them and see how it looks. If it looks good, I'll go with it. But and they'll be easier to mask too since they're so large. But it was kind of nice to be able to go along so far here and not have to worry about masking anything. Uh, as I said, the panel details are raised on this enough where you have a nice clear line with your paintbrush and you put on your, I used my magnifying glasses and I just got up nice and close to it and you could see right where to paint, so that worked out really good. So, um, I finished up by using this panel line accenter after I got everything done and it's really simple and easy to use. You just take it right straight out of the bottle here. Make sure you shake it up pretty good if it's been sitting for a while. You know, it's got pigments in it and they settle towards the bottom. And, uh, and you just basically drag it over whatever you want to highlight. And then after you get finished, you take a little uh, paper towel and just kind of pat it down a little bit or wipe it off and to get rid of the excess. And it'll cling to all the small little uh, recesses and raised details and all that. And it looks really cool. It adds a, a really realistic uh, look to it. And the dark brown, I thought, seemed to really, like I said, match in with everything else. So let me flip it over here and we'll show you what we've been doing on the painting on the bottom. As I said, we've got... This is a decal here, which is really nice. It's got a sort of a uh, goldish metallic uh, hue to it. I, when I was looking at them in the um, first video there, in, inside the plastic, they were behind a, a piece of tissue paper, which I didn't notice, and I thought they looked kind of dull. But once I pulled them out of there, they looked a whole lot better, and I'm really pleased with that. We did a little bit of you know burn detail on that, like you saw on the studio model. And as I said, we're just working our way back, uh, painting everything by hand here. And each one of these panels that are raised here. I just took this um, panel detail here and just went right around the edge of it and you can see uh, that it, it it brings out the detail of that quite a bit. I really like how that looks and it was really super easy to do. To me it's always got good quality stuff so it's just another pr uh, product in their line of weathering and stuff. Um, but I'll be using it on the entire model. So that's about it for the paint guys. Um, as I said, really straightforward. It works great. Uh, after I got everything done, I, you know, I basically went over and sealed it all again. There will probably be one more co uh, clear coat seal over the entire model after I get all the rest of this done. And uh, there's a few little marking detail uh, decals that go on here and there. So uh, that'll be the final seal. We'll cross that bridge at the end. But uh, let me start taking it apart here a little bit, and I'll show you what we've got for lighting. Um, all this wiring is all preliminary. It's not cleaned up yet, so don't don't freak out about that. I've still got to put heat shrink. These are all just kind of twisted together and sitting there, but you can see I've got the LED installed. Um, the 5 millimeter runs right up straight inside here in this little socket that sits for your bridge. And then I've got a strip of uh, 080. This is the regular double density. I shouldn't say 0805. That's the smaller stuff. This is the regular uh, white double density SMD or uh, LED tape that you can get from HDA Model Works. All the uh, lighting components that I'm using here are all from HDA Model Works. You can get all this stuff in one place. So that's nice and handy. And you can see I just used a little strip of LED tape, laid it on its side and, and uh, super glued it in place here. And uh, the nice thing about that is, is that it turned out to be exactly the right height when it was laid on its side. It, it still fits perfectly in here once you, you know, lower this forward part here all the way down on top. It's not crushing it or anything like that. It's a perfect fit. And so you can see I, 
when I put it in here, I specifically curved it a little bit so that it will project the light, you know, kind of like nice and even all the way out to the edges here. Now there's a center post that's molded onto the kit here, which I went ahead and removed because it was causing a shadow uh, in my lighting right here. These two all the way out at the ends don't seem to bother it very much, but so we left those there. We wanted to have them for structure and strength. Now this piece right here is a double piece that they give you. Uh, as I told you, um, there is a photo etch, photo etch overlay that can go on this and um, I think the window openings on it are, are maybe slightly bigger and I know the window openings for the lower one are a little bit bigger um, but I think this part looks really good all by itself and you have a clear lens that comes with the kit that you glue to the back side of it and that's uh, to bring the lighting more towards you know the windows themselves well, what I did here is something that I always do on my models when I'm lighting is uh, I sprayed a real thin coat of white paint with my airbrush on the back side of that lens and that's going to eliminate any kind of uh, uh, twinkling or, you know, uh, over lighting that you might get from the, that light strip there being so close to the, uh, to the lens. But anyway, that's a common thing that I do on every single one. Every, like when I do the big 350 Enterprise, all those little pieces of glass I put in, I always go over the back side of those uh, with a little bit of that. It's the easiest way to diffuse something and the light still comes through. You just want to make sure you just don't pile it on there really thick, you know, several coats. One uh, light dusting, even dusting of, of white paint is all it takes. And we'll show you the lighting and how good it looks in just a second here. It came out really nice. Um, as I said, I've got uh, two strips down in there that you can see. Uh, and they're just kind of curved this way. And they light up the sides here in the front part of the uh, lower row of windows. All right, so here we are with a look at how some of the lighting looks on the forward part of this model. And we'll get you in close here for the look at the uh, that upper row of windows you can see. Uh, the lighting coming through on that looks nice and even and clear and you can see why I did that little diffusion in there with that white spray paint guys you see what that does it gets rid of all those little uh, twinkling effects if you try to move around on it like this and it looks nice and even it also brings it right to the surface like it should up on the top you can see the bridge lighting and again that's just a single uh, pure red five millimeter LED it's made to fit in that little socket and we've got that lighting done the same it was in the movie you got the kind of segmented windows up here and it's hard to see in the movie but there's a shot I think where you can see one time where there's actually two windows here in the back too all the way at the rear of it that were lit up um, I've also got the uh, uh, officers lounge windows there opened up and a little bit of uh, clear put in there as I mentioned uh, I haven't got any lighting in there yet I'm actually gonna go in there with a little bit of a softer white to light that area and a little bit dim you know it's kind of supposed to be like the lounge area of the ship and then at the back here we got to put two bright SMDs in there facing towards the rear and sorry about the glare going on here guys well, these open spots but um, here's the lower uh, row of windows and uh, as I said you know there's the there's the optional photo etch set for this but I'm really pleased with how these windows look just on their own I think they're just fine the uh, scale is really small like they should be if you look at the actual film itself when the ship's coming towards you you can't really see these until uh, the ship gets pretty close kind of you know kind of something like that so I'm just gonna go ahead and use these the way they are I think it looks just just fine and um, so and again you don't lose that detail by putting that photo etch over the top of it and all that so um, I think it looks really good just like that again we'll be working on sealing up this uh, photon launcher uh, there's a clear lens that needs to go in there and some photo etch parts and then the important thing we want to remember too is that we don't want to see a glow coming out of that when it's not firing uh, so we'll have to light block that I'll probably paint the back side of that lens black and with the LED stuck into it it's gonna emit light on the front side of it anyway so we'll be okay with that and that way when we have the internal lighting going on here it won't leak into the uh, the launcher itself We'll we'll get that worked out and we'll show you how we uh, solve that problem but there it is. Um, it's running on 9 volts, just straight up uh, DC power. So, you know, a regular 9 volt DC power supply is going to power all this. And uh, we've got a couple more LEDs to put in. Probably an SMD or something right here for this flasher. And uh, then you start getting into the rearward part of the ship and some more lighting that needs to go into that. But uh, the, pretty much the whole forward area is all worked out here, guys. I'm pretty happy with it. So, all right, well, we're going to call this one a wrap. We'll be back with part two. Uh, we'll get into a lot more of the uh, building, the main part of the hull, some more paintwork, and uh, we'll show you some uh, 
some of the lighting that we're doing in that part of the model too. So uh, we've got to mount the main control board in there that you know controls the photon effect and uh, the blinking lights, and uh, so that'll be important where we figure out where that goes. All right, until the next one, everybody, take care out there, and we'll see you next time. Happy modeling, everyone.